RP Thor here. Okay, guys. What a gorgeous day. Living the dream. The red pill's under attack. <laughs> well, you know, we did our uh, end of the year 2022 show on the Dragon Ship with my panel. And the crew members all kind of came to the same conclusion. Get ready. The red pill is going to get under attack. Yep. We kind of went mainstream and got embraced. You know, some of my friends really did a good job getting some attention. You know, Myron and Walter, uh, John MLD, Rolo, shoot, all you guys, Ryan, Aaron, uh, guys that have been around for a long time. And Andrew Tate, Sterling Cooper, Jay Wall are fantastic at getting uh, us recognized. Because there's a lot of value to be had with red pill knowledge. Now, as with anything that's at least viewed as new and successful, there's going to be a whole lot of dog piling on. You guys know what a dog pile is? Where all the dogs jump on each other? It's kind of like rugby when one guy's got the ball and they all just all jump on that pile with the one guy holding the ball trying to steal it from him. Well, I guess YouTube's a lot like dog piling on. <laughs> you got the likes of Chris Williamson now starting to dog pile on. Oh, yeah. I mean... Red Pill for a while is, oh, it's fantastic. The Tradcons wanted to come out and say, look at this. There's traditional values in Red Pill awareness. Look at this. It's amazing. Where did this come from? Is there a problem between male and female intersectional dynamics? And why is dating so difficult these days? We have all these communication devices and, and people, men and women just don't get along. But look at these guys. They actually seem to have some answers. Let's see what it is. And for a while there, it kind of looked like the Tradcons really wanted a piece of it. No, not so much, guys. Tradcons need a, a bad guy. Sooner or later, we're going to be it because they view the entire world through the lens of ideologies and religions and right and wrong. The left does too. You know, they just come at it from kind of the opposite angle, the Marxist side of things, and everything's equal and everything's good in my truth, my reality. And really both sides are kind of wrong when it comes to red pill awareness however both sides kind of flood in on the red pill because some of what is available to you to learn about human intersectional dynamics isn't political at all you know it's concepts that are based in evolutionary psychology none of these are complete hypothesis yet I don't even know if they've risen to the level of theory except in, uh, uh, in, except in evolutionary psychology. And the only thing we have to really see if, if this awareness or these uh, tenets, so to speak, actually hold up is by watching people behave and then trying to draw conclusions based on the Pareto principle, which is kind of the 80-20 principle. Is it most likely to occur or is it least likely to occur? And so far... The red pill certainly looks like it's most likely to occur. When I say red pill, obviously it's the metaphor for human intersexual dynamics and how that's applied. And to some degree, the social interaction between men and women uh, in today's culture. And across all cultures, actually. Uh, because the studies that have been done with evolutionary psychology don't just focus on the Western culture, which we're all wrapped up in, you know. Because we're wrapped up in a Western culture, we think uh, this is the only way to be. And just like what happened in Iceland over the last few hundred years, it is not the only way to be. Um, so the red pill, the dog piling on, we have to be the bad guy. There's going to be a rise of people pointing fingers and saying, look at how bad these guys are. And a bunch of incels. They're just a bunch of, I don't know. The real popular thing is to use the... Uh, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Sigma designations, which are really the social sexual hierarchy, which is just, you know, the zodiac signs for men kind of make them feel a little bit better about their plight in life. And I get that. It's useful. But it also, uh, you know, allows people to make some kind of salacious uh, attacks on others. I kind of chuckle at it because I've been in that boat too. Attack me all you want. I'm living the dream. It doesn't bother me. You want to you, you attack me? Attack me. It doesn't matter. It's just words. 
that's the real dangerous trend that's going to come out of this, though, is the trend that words are violence. Words are not violence. Can words incite violence? Absolutely. But we really started a popular trend, and it's going to affect the right. It's, going to, it's already affected the left because the right ends up several years behind the left and uses the same tactics politically. At least in the West, everything is political, and unfortunately, the sexes are political as well. Gender has been politicized between men and women on purpose for another talk. But the danger that comes up that I want everybody to keep aware of is this this happened this is happening all around me right now here in California and I'm sure it's going to affect everybody there there is this trend to say that sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never hurt me no 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 that is not what's being broadcast there is a big push and we're I'm, I'm seeing this on both sides that sticks and stones may break my bones but words will last hurt me forever that's what it is words will hurt me forever. I've actually seen this on a billboard. I didn't get a chance to get a picture, but I had this little kid crying, and that was the same. Here in California, I was headed to LA, and it started me thinking, oh shit, I know exactly where this is going. If words will hurt you forever, that is the gateway to use violence for someone that uses words. And where do words come from? Words have many different meanings, and of course, the battle politically here in our country in the West is that let's change the definition of words because if we change the definitions of words, we can control the outcomes of monetary policy, uh, of people's behavior, and we can make ourselves, essentially make ourselves wealthier by, change, wealthier by changing the definition of words. We can obtain power and happiness and we can affect our worldview and those around us by changing the meaning of words. And so they do influence people. But now words come from thoughts. So if I have thoughts, the very next step, if my thoughts become words and you can use violence against me because of my words, everybody knows we lived through this before and it's cost millions of lives. So get ready and strap up. The red pill is going to be under attack. It's going to last for a while. We're coming into the political season, and there's going to be entertainment and fun for all to be had. So keep living the dream, guys. Skull until the dragon ship. See you next time.